Hello all. In this episode, I'll start working with the enclosure, or more specifically, putting in the power supplies. The enclosure that I chose is a Chilipsu ABS plastic enclosure, which is environmentally sealed. It's approximately 20 inches tall by 16 inches wide by 7.9 inches deep. I originally bought one that was about 16 by 12 by 7, but enclosures never seemed to be big enough, so I returned it and purchased this larger one. The enclosure comes with a perforated mounting plate that should make mounting the components fairly simple. One convenient thing about the perforated design is that if something doesn't work out in one position, I can simply unscrew it and move it somewhere else without having to re-drill new mounting holes. In a previous video, I said I might mount the power supplies on the door. I changed my mind on that, however, partly because the door does not have a flat mounting surface, and partly because I didn't want to drill holes through the door to mount the power supplies. This image from Chilipsu shows a slightly smaller enclosure that includes a second hinged mounting panel. The enclosure that I bought didn't have a secondary mounting panel, but I figured I could utilize the T-slot mounting points and make a custom mount for my power supplies. So, for illustration purposes, I've got a power supply here. It's not one of the ones I'll be using, but it does have the same dimensions. I want to mount the power supplies in the lower part of the box using the lower T-slots on the left and the right. The first thing I need to determine is the height or elevation of the mount. The tallest components that I have are the Meanwell power supply and the contactor. I need to have the power supplies high enough so there's room underneath and low enough so that there's still room when the cover is closed and for ventilation. The width of the enclosure will allow for three across mounting of the power supplies. Once I had an idea of where I wanted the power supplies, I started laying out the design in CAD. Using the measurements of the enclosure, I started by creating a model of the top and the bottom. Once I had the basic box, I added the T-slots in the proper positions. Once the T-slots were laid out, I created the upper and lower T-slot hinge sections. I needed something rigid to mount the power supplies to, so I picked up some aluminum angle at my local big box store. I laid out the aluminum angles at the proper elevation and then started building the rest of the components around them. This includes the movable hinge sections that the aluminum angle mounts to. And opposite the hinges is the fixed bracket for the mount to rest on. I created a hole in the bracket to receive a threaded brass insert. The brass insert will be pressed in from the bottom. The last few millimeters of the hole has a reduced diameter, so the brass insert will be captive, preventing it from being pulled out. To secure the 3D printed parts to the aluminum angle, I will use 4 millimeter set screws. I created threaded holes in the CAD model. The set screws will thread directly into the 3D printed parts. Whenever feasible, I like to make toolless assemblies. Here I created a fastener with an integrated knob so that it can be disassembled by hand. The lower section of the knob contains a four millimeter cap screw and nut, and the upper section with the knob has the correct height to be above the power supply but below the lid. The upper and lower sections press fit together with a hexagon joint. And lastly here, I'll turn on the view of the three power supplies and get an overview of the whole mount system. Here's the end bracket and a look at the threaded brass insert. To secure the end bracket in place, I left a one and a quarter millimeter gap between the enclosure and the bracket for 3M VHB heavy duty mounting tape. I haven't used it before, but I'm anxious to give it a try. Here's a better look at the two piece hold down knob. 
The four millimeter cap screw protrudes from the bottom section. Here's a close up of the upper and lower sections. If the 3D print looks a bit rough to you, it's because I've opted for print speed over quality. I'm using a pretty coarse layer height as well as a pretty fast print speed. The power supplies are secured to the aluminum angle with short M4 by 5 millimeter cap screws. To get accurate spacing of the power supply mounting holes in the aluminum angle, I 3D printed a template which I could leapfrog down the aluminum angle from one set of holes to the next. At one end of the aluminum angle are the movable hinge sections, and at the other end is this mating piece to the hold down bracket. There are threaded holes in the 3D parts, and also mating holes in the aluminum angle. Set screws will pass through the holes in the aluminum angle, making the 3D printed parts captive, and reducing the chance of stripping out the 3D printed threads. For the hinge pins, I 3D printed some plastic caps that press fit onto a piece of stainless steel welding rod. The stainless steel welding rod makes for a durable and economical hinge pin. With all the pieces and parts pinned, pressed, and screwed together, it's time to put it into the enclosure and see how the parts all fit together. I find that as long as the measurements are put into the computer model accurately and the 3D printer is calibrated, everything fits as it should by the third or fourth try. The elevation of the power supplies in the enclosure worked out perfectly. The next thing to look at is how to retain the hinges and the hold down bracket in the T-slots. The obvious solution is to bolt them in place, which I still may do, but I'd like to give the 3M mounting tape a try first, just to see how it performs. The shear line is going to need some help. So I 3D printed some 3mm thick square tiles to bridge the hinge section down to the enclosure. The heavy duty mounting tape is rated with a shear strength of 80 pounds per square inch. It looks good on paper, but I'll have to see how it performs over time. The final result moves the power supplies off the base mounting plate to free up room for other components. It also allows them to swing out of the way without the need for tools to access whatever is below them. I may need to add an additional brace once the enclosure is mounted vertically, but I'll deal with that when the time comes. And a quick functional check of the mount with the enclosure standing up. The mount sags a few millimeters from the weight of the power supplies when it opens, but this is not unexpected considering that the box and the mount are all made of plastic. All in all, I'm quite satisfied with the result. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow along. Now that I've got the power supplies sorted out, I can start arranging the components on the base mounting plate. The next video will probably be short and just an overview of where I decided to mount the components in the enclosure. Take care until next time.